This is an introduction and brief tour of DWM, the Dynamic Window Manager. You'll see that when you first log into a DWM session, there's not a lot to see. It's a minimalist interface. You'll just find a bar at the top of the screen. You can toggle on and off. In that bar you'll see on the left hand side a list of the tags and just to the right of that you'll see a small glyph that indicates the current in this case it's the default tiling and the others are monocle which is one client viewed per tag and floating which is similar to the traditional stacking model for most window managers where clients can overlap each other and appear haphazardly throughout the window. If you install DWM you'd also want to install DMenu which is another small suckless application that the binaries in your path and just with the keyboard start those applications quite handy. You'll see in the top right this is version 6 of DWM. It's a mature and stable project. Uh, over the years it has inspired and influenced a number of other window managers, notably Awesome, Xmonad and Echinus. And in more recent times it's inspired some of the minimal tilers like CatWM, Dmini WM, Monster WM and Snap WM just to name a few. You'll also see if you look in the Suckless repository that in addition to DWM and DMenu there's a number of other very handy utilities that adhere to the same philosophy. So things like Slock, Tabbed, Surf, etc. One of the key objectives of DWM is that the source code is not intended to exceed 2000 standard lines of code and that has kept the project very lean. Irrespective of that it's still a very powerful and flexible window manager. In part that's due to a number of the patches that have been supplied by the community over the years. You see there's quite a few of them and uh, those patches allow you to extend the functionality of DWM and construct a workflow really tailored to what makes you productive and effective at the keyboard. DWM is not really uh, built in the standard model in terms of the way it manages windows and that's the dynamic part. It's probably best to illustrate that with examples rather than trying to describe it. So what I'll do here is I'll tag the browser to the second tag. And if I wanted to pull that back in to view I could. And I'll open up a couple of other terminals. Let's just populate them with some stuff. And then I'll tag these terminals three, another one, put something in it, three, tag that to three, and the final one, and we'll use this as a bit of a look inside DWM first, let's tag that to three, and you see now that Tags 2 and 3 are active, and I can pull 2 in, toggle that, or 3. When I pull 3 in, you'll see that the 3 terminals are arranged in the classic tiling arrangement, the master and 2 in the stack. And you can change the ratio from master to stack. You can move through the various master and stack clients. After DWM6, um, nmaster patch was in 
incorporated into core so now in addition to that you can also increment and decrement the number of clients in master like so two or three and decrement back out so if we just go into monocle for a moment we'll see how that works where the single focused client takes up the view back into tile if we were going to floating and open another terminal you would see that it just floats if I go into tiling mode that becomes master and the previous master gets pushed to the top of the stack So if I so choose, pull the browser into view, push that back out. Right, what I might do is move these terminals. I'm going to need them. Let's have a look at the header file where you can configure a lot of options. So you see that there's various elements here that can be configured. So for example you could change your font. There's the tags, 1 through 9, you're able to change those. That's the basic functionality that comes with the vanilla DWM. As I said, a lot of the um, extended functionality is available through patches, so I'll apply my patch set. And you can see that I'm applying four patches on this machine. The base config customizations, which are standard across all my machines. Status colors, cycle, push. There's two layout patches that aren't applied on this machine. It's a netbook, they're not really needed. Backstack and Fibonacci. And then I have customizations that are specific to my work laptop and my desktop. So I don't apply those either. Now that those have been applied, you can recompile DWM. And then Install it. And now we restart DWM and we should be in patched mode. And there we go. So if I was to open another terminal now and see that the terminal gaps have gone, and what I might do is Send the terminals to 3, browser still on 2, use the push, I'll demonstrate push patch, so now if I want to return to master, how push works. It's quite a helpful little patch. Let's have a look at the we'll see that it's changed a little bit. I've got a new font for example. tags. You can see that I've customised those. Just only need four of them on this machine and I give them meaningful names. You'll see there's a number of rules there and these rules allow you to predefine where you'd want particular applications, to which tag you'd want them to open in. So if we look at one of them, MUT for example, I want that to open in the mail tag which is four and I'll have particular rule and 
command to do that. So you can see that the command for mail is to open up a URXT, URXVT client with the title MUT and to execute MUT inside that. And then I have a keybind to control Alt N to affect that. So you'll see as I do that that the fourth tag mail will show that it's got a client in it. Now if I wanted to have a look at that mail I can simply pull that into view. And I can see a mail client. And the other patch that I have applied is status colors. That's a simple bash script. You can see I have to find some colors and have a range of functions. And those functions are all printed to the root window. It provides me with system information. So what I might do is normally that would be started in the start script. I'll start that now. Constantly. And you should see that pop up. There you go. Battery, CPU, memory, disk use, whether I have new emails, packages, and whether I'm connected to the internet. That comprises the basics of DWM, at least the way I use it. It's tremendously simple and powerful way to manage Windows. As well as the DWM site. The Arch Wiki has an excellent page on DWM and there's a good thread that has a number of hacks that community members have contributed over the last wee while um, that scratch their own itches. All in all, it's an excellent, lightweight, powerful window manager and I can't recommend it highly enough.